You're listening to I Like That Story podcast number 35, Grandma Gumption. Today's story brought to you by Evolution Consulting, nationwide image professionals for styling, speaking, and stage. Although there are many words to describe perseverance, determination, grit, stamina, I like the word gumption. Originally, it was a Scottish word, but many, many languages and cultures have words and phrases for this rare and valuable quality of sticking through thick and thin, and I admire, deeply admire, those who have developed its qualities, like Grandma Gumption. This woman had lived her life in two countries, three states, and eight different communities, and no doubt she learned about the crippling and invisible disease called loneliness. So when they settled into a new town, by chance or accident, they found themselves in a neighborhood of young families, families with noisy and pesky children. The builder, perhaps seeing this, had added a beautiful and spacious deck onto the back of their home with a secluded view of flowers and trees and fences and loneliness. So they made a decision. Their driveway was fairly short, I guess to allow for a bigger backyard, and each day during the summer, these new-to-the-neighborhood strangers, these gray-haired, obsolete retirees, would not sit on the back deck, but on lawn chairs in the front of the house, in the garage. (laughs) They had a cooler with pop and water and two friendly smiles, and they would wave at parents walking kids by in strollers, say hi to the shy little toddlers, introduce themselves, learn some names, offer them some pop or water, if it was okay with the parents. Well, you know what happened, right? In our day and age, our parents of parents often live in different towns, many miles away, but little kids still have a need and desire for sitting down and talking to a gray-haired grandma lady. Grandma Gumption got to know all their names, took pictures of proud kids with t-ball uniforms and trophies, gave fresh-baked cookies to gap-toothed girls and boys, knitted little blankets and booties and caps for the newest arrivals, posed for pictures with proud brothers and sisters, marveled at how fast they all grew, and marked their height on a door sill in the garage. Hmm. They never did sit on that back deck. They never did have evenings of complete solitude. Instead, they spent evenings in their garage, talking love into grandchildren and encouragement and wisdom into the young parents that brought them. I was not there when this all happened. I only found out about it at Grandma Gumption's funeral. There was a huge stack of knitted and crocheted items, and the then toddlers who had now grown into young adults who came to say goodbye were encouraged to take something home. There was a towel. It reminded me some of the needlework my mom did back in the day. It was sitting off to the side, and they said, please take it. So I did. I brought it home, and hopefully it will be there for some future day, if I ever feel sorry for myself or or lonely or feel like I could use some gumption. Thank you for listening. As you can tell, I believe in the power of a story. Story changes lives and encourages people to overcome obstacles and live lives of peace, passion, and prosperity, whatever that may look like. And story changes business. It clarifies mission, attracts good people and good customers and offers a culture that encourages growth in many measurable and unmeasurable ways. To find out more about what I write or where I speak, you can find me on my website, ilikethatstory.net. Until next time, God bless.